Run, don't walk away if you hear any of these red flags, or run, don't walk towards if you hear these green flags. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trunk Talk. My name is Charlotte. And I'm Gabby. And today we are breaking down red flags and green flags in picking your car dealership whether that be a new franchise to dealership or just a regular used mom and pop shop, we wanna break down what are some of our red flags and some of our green flags. Now you're probably wondering, are we, are we qualified to do this? What, yes. do, what do we do? We are qualified and we're actually qualified through the exact governing board that is gonna make sure oh. you as a consumer are not getting played by a dealership. Ooh. So we are based on a dealership in Ontario, Canada. And here in Ontario, we have OMVIC. So OMVIC is our sale, automotive um, sales regulator. Mm -hmm. They make sure every dealership, or hopefully every dealership, is registered through them and up to date with the latest OMVIC practices. You do have to go through a course to get OMVIC certified, both dealer and salespeople. And it's something that you have to renew every two years, I believe, for salespeople and three years for dealerships. So if you're not up to date, you're not up to sell. Ooh. However, there are some dealerships that are OMVIC certified but aren't necessarily following business practices. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about that today, what to look out for and what to look out for positively. Mm -hmm. So good things and the bad things, we're rolling out all of it today. So right? just, <laughs> you got it. So just a little bit of a background as to how we kind of play into this is, Gabby, where have you worked in the car industry or what role? So I've done sales, <laughs> and it's not just sales here. I also worked at a dealership before my time at Brantford Kia, and um, it, the business practices are different for sure. I will say it's I'm happy where I work at now because I know we're abiding by these rules mm -hmm. and we're there to help other people. So a dealership that actually wants to help their customers. That isn't always the case, I'll say, and no. we'll get into those red flags. <laughs> so Charlotte, you've seen quite a bit because you've done multiple roles at the dealership, right? Yeah, so a little bit of background as to what I've done is I've done sales, I've done service, and then most recently I've been in the business office, which if you're unfamiliar with what the business office is, is that is where I do up all of the paperwork um, to make sure that everything is compliant with the bank and also with OMVIC as to your paperwork. So I'm mm -hmm. doing up the bill of sale, I'm printing your bank contract, and I also deal with ancillary products such as warranty, um, any undercoating or rust proofing that you may want. And that is a hot topic that can usually get people or dealerships in a little bit of hot water depending on the approach that they take. So we'll also break down a little bit of what is a good approach and what is a bad approach. But on the sales end, when someone comes into a dealership, uh, what are some red flags on the sales floor? Well, number one, if the <clears throat> lot is a buy here, pay here lot, that's not always a good thing. Another thing is also how the salespeople treat you. It's fairly easy to see someone who's just there to make a sale. They don't want to help you, but they want to sell you a car, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. They're not listening to your needs. They're not paying attention to what you want. They're just trying to push you into a vehicle. It might feel like there's a lot of pressure. Your needs aren't being met. You're not being listened to. And that's generally a pretty red flag. It doesn't get much better from there. If you haven't even bought yet, what matters or what happens when you do buy a car, the after service? Are they going to take care of you? Are they going to listen to you? Are they going to respond to you? It doesn't seem likely. Woof. Woof. <laughs> now, the opposing green flag to that would obviously be a salesperson who you're able to have a bit of a connection with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that comes down to transparency. Yep. So you guys are probably thinking, well, this podcast episode or this video is really just sounding like an ad for your dealership. But it's because we are very proud of the business practices that we do employ. Yep. And a part of that is for our sales team is they actually work on non-commission. They are salaried. Yep. So... The, the reason that we do that is to put a greater emphasis on customer service and meeting the customer's needs than getting the customer into the most expensive vehicle to bring home a bigger paycheck, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. Um, and so that is part of the transparency that we personally employ. That way we can focus on helping out our customers, having a good relationship with them, building rapport and actually finding the right vehicle for them. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of talk, especially in the last few years due to, you know, the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, there's been inventory shortages, there's been a high demand for certain vehicles, and there's been an increase in prices for used cars. So whether it's a new car dealership you're looking at or a used car lot, there's quite a few differences. Mm -hmm. So I know when it comes to new cars, we sell both here. Mm -hmm. We are a Kia franchise, so Kia product, we sell it at MSRP plus taxes and fees. And that's something that has to be disclosed every time you list a car if you are a dealership. If you're selling it privately on Facebook Marketplace, you can kind of do whatever you want. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. More on that later. <clears throat> so as a dealership, if we were selling a brand new Kia EV6, we're going to put the MSRP plus taxes and fees. If the customer chooses to purchase anything else, whether it be a warranty, paint protection, or some sort of accessory, that's totally up to them. We, of course, present the offer, but they can totally decline. Right, Charlotte? Yeah. Are you So you're saying that optional purchases are optional? optional? Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe it. 
but that's not exactly the case at a lot of dealerships mm -hmm. since the whole you know, inventory mm -hmm. shortage, a lot of dealerships seem to be taking advantage of their customers by, again, listing the vehicle at MSRP, but once the customer comes in to buy it, or if they've been waiting for a year, months, whatever, for their car, the price has suddenly changed because they're forcing these add-ons. And that's how they kind of get away with not listing or listing at MSRP, right? Because mm -hmm. they're still technically doing that. Well, it's let's products. Let's break that down is, based on what Onvik says, is that legal? And I personally see this as a little bit of a gray area because a loophole, yeah. realistically, as dealers actually can sell vehicles for whatever the price that they want, you do have to have MSRP disclosed. Mm -hmm. That is really the big kicker. So on your bill of sales, you do have to have it itemized list by list. MSRP does have to be on there, but there is nothing stopping dealers from saying, well, if you want this vehicle, I know it's in demand. You have to purchase this ceramic coating. You have to purchase, you know, X amount uh, years for your warranty. Winter you, tire package. You <laughs> have to do that or we're not going to sell you this vehicle. We're going to find someone else who will. And again, as long as that is itemized on the bill of sale, is there really isn't anything stopping people from doing that. Mm -hmm. And a part of the reason behind that is, as Gabby said, in the past four years is the market has, has definitely changed and there's been a new car shortage. Mm -hmm. So to kind of combat that, what a lot of dealers is they're charging a market adjustment fee and the rationale behind it is, well, we're not getting as many new cars, so we need to try to make uh, so much more money um, on the new on the limited new cars that we do have. And that I don't really think is fair. And that's definitely something that we don't do here in terms of market adjustment fee. Yeah. What about used cars, though? What happens with used cars? So used cars, there's no set MSRP. Yep. Uh, and you're certainly say. You know, if you're looking at a 2020 Civic or something like that, you're not going to go off of the MSRP from when that vehicle was sold new. Mm -hmm. It's tons of things are going to change. And when it comes to used cars is if you're shopping around and if you want to see what the listed price is to see if it's fair is, you know, do a little bit of research too. Yeah. Uh, but with that being said is you have to keep in mind the actual condition, the disclosures of the vehicle, the mileage of the vehicle, the trim, and also if it's more of a specialty item or specialty yeah. vehicle. Yeah, if you're looking for a very, very niche performance car, price could be anywhere, really, mm -hmm. really anywhere, depending on mileage, you know, model, year, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And same with just a regular used car. Depends how much there is out there, depends the condition. If it's been with a ton of claims, accident claims, yeah. that changes the value a little bit. <laughs> Definitely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, what about dealership websites and advertising? So, dealer for used cars or new cars? Both. Both? Okay, well, when it comes to advertising, like we mentioned earlier, you have to have the MSRP somewhere on there, and you do also have to indicate that plus licensing and taxes are extra. So, if I'm listing a used car, let's say it's a 2020... Civic! Civic, there we go. <laughs> and let's say we're selling it 20000 flat. We have to have the 20000 plus tax plus fee on there, right? And that has to be clearly stated, right? Clearly stated, right? If there's an admin fee or any sort of other fee, that has to be included in the actual listing price. So if mm -hmm. our admin fee is 500 bucks, then the actual price of the car would be 19.5 plus the $500 admin fee. So total $20,000. That's what has to be listed. So mm -hmm. the admin has to be included in that listing price, if that makes sense. If you choose to get any accessories on top of that, because you can still totally get accessories on a used car, mm -hmm. they want to get the windows tinted, that comes after because that is optional. Now, something I want to make a note of is what about a dealership demo? Is Gabby and I have actually done videos on mm -hmm. dealership demos and how sometimes you can get a pretty good deal on a new used car, I'm using air quotes on that, yeah. that is equipped with some extra accessories or protection that the dealership has done. Yeah. So for example, I drive a demo vehicle and something I do with my demos at the dealership is I get them ceramic coated because sometimes these are out as service loaners, it's my personal vehicle, customers are driving it, and it's something that generally goes through a fair bit of use. We want to keep it in the best shape for the, when the time comes for us to sell it. Mm -hmm. Now, if I do get ceramic coating and say it costs a thousand dollars for the dealership or something like that, that ceramic coating, if we are intending to sell the vehicle with ceramic coating, that also has to be included in that purchase price exactly like that admin fee that Gabby had mentioned. Yes. So that still has to be included that way. If you see the vehicle online and you're like, wow, this Seltos is exactly what I've been looking for and it's at the price point, you know that when you walk in, that ceramic is included on that. Absolutely. And hopefully they also include that in the description too, breaking yep. it down that yeah. there's ceramic in there, right? Yep, absolutely. So that's really good. So we got new and used cars covered. Based off experiences that we've seen, <laughs> it's not just what we do here, it's also what we've seen. Because keep in mind, we deal with customers every day. Mm -hmm. Maybe they bought cars from another dealership their entire life until suddenly they had a bad experience. Maybe they never had dealership loyalty and they flopped around and had 
bad experiences. It's something First of all, so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. It's something that we've seen a lot of. So, Charlotte, for instance, uh -huh. what happened to a friend of yours? Yeah, so these were some friends of mine and they bought a sweet ride. Mm -hmm. um, it was an older vehicle and they bought it probably two years ago and they were having tons of mechanical problems with this car. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know what, we just want to be done with it. We're going to sell it. They're going to sell it to us. They're going to, you know, buy a vehicle on the lot. And I'm going through the Carfax because obviously if you're a new, like you run the Carfax. Mm -hmm. And I see that there's about four disclosures on this vehicle and it's a reman. And so up front I had asked them and I'm like, and this was before I'd run the Carfax. I was like, oh, like, are there any disclosures? Is there anything I need to know about this vehicle? They're like, oh, no, 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 it's totally clean. It was not totally clean. So no. I called them up and I said, hey, like, I ran the Carfax. There's, you know, it's a salvaged vehicle, first of all. So that means yeah. that it, at one point, was deemed unsalvageable. <laughs> and it's been pieced back together. It's a Franken car. And now it is back on the road. And there was also multiple accident disclosures. And they're like, what? No, we never knew anything about that. And I'm like, okay, that's... You know, pretty hard to forget. Send me a copy of your bill of sale. So not only was this bill of sale written in pencil, um, red flag, red flag, red flag if your bill of sale is written in pencil, but there was no clear, concise wording that this was ever a, sal a remanufactured vehicle, a salvage mm -hmm. vehicle, or that there was any type of Carfax disclosures. And when it comes to your bill of sale, is there are necessary disclosures that absolutely have to be on there. Mm -hmm. And you know, in addition to just, you know, the vehicle make, model, year and stuff like that, there's what's called, you know, the six deadly disclosures mm -hmm. that we kind of talk about in the dealership world. And so, you know, you, you want to make sure you have the correct make model. Um, you have to disclose if it was a daily rental, a taxi, a limousine, an emergency service vehicle. Um, if it was, what else, what else, what else? Da yeah, daily stolen. rental. Yeah, stolen, um, <laughs> irreparable, other, salvaged, yeah. registered in other provinces. Like there's tons of disclosures that have to be written there in clear and concise language. Um, also, when it comes to a Carfax, if there's an accident on it, you have to put the date, the repair, and I usually put a brief little summary there too, mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that everything is covered. That way the customer knows what they're getting. Now, if you have purchased a vehicle, you know that there's no cooling off period. When you sign the bill of sale, the deal is done, unless it comes to something of those disclosures where something was not properly disclosed or unfair business practices. And that was pretty much the case in this situation. Mm -hmm. So 90 days, is it 90 days or is it 60 days? I can't 90. remember. 90 days, thank you. <laughs> 90 days from signing, if there is a disclosure, um, you actually can have the enact your right of rescission, have the dealership buy the vehicle back under the motor vehicle, um, under motor vehicle disclosures. Now, if it is due to unfair business practices under section 14 to 16 of the Consumer Protection Act, is you actually have one year upon signing up that contract to enact the right of rescission. So if they lied to you, if, they, if the product was unfairly represented, you can again have the dealership buy back that vehicle. And if you've ever gotten yourself into this situation, first of all, I am so sorry that that happened to you. That is awful and so frustrating to be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but make sure that you talk to your dealership about it, even if it is past the time period, call them back, say, hey, listen, like there are some unfair practices. I want you to buy this vehicle back and see if you can negotiate a price. If you can't, I still think it's worth going to OMBIC and depending on how much you paid in the vehicle, pursuing arbitration. But now for the business office and what we've experienced and what to look out for. Mm -hmm. So Charlotte, you've been a business manager. And yeah. Essentially, that means that you do. <laughs> so what do you do? <laughs> I mentioned a little bit of perspective on doing up the paperwork and the, the disclosures. But now what about the warranty and stuff like that? Now that can obviously be a hot topic. Some people mm -hmm. love it. Some people don't. And whichever way you spin, that's okay. Um, what the job of my, in my perspective, what the job of the financial manager is to do is to present you the options. That way you can make an informed decision on if it works for your budget, if it works for your lifestyle, um, and your overall needs of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I try to do. Every product, no matter what it is, I will go through it, answer your questions. And I obviously I will try to show the value in it and how it would be relevant to someone's lifestyle. But at the end of the day, it's their decision if they'd like to purchase it or not. Right. And something that we do here at Brand for Key, and I know a couple other dealerships do this too, is we include what's called an F&I waiver, meaning every product is listed and it says purchased or declined. And we check off what is applicable. So it just shows that if you purchase anything, it is of your own volition. We did not force you to. And again, if you chose not to, you chose not to. Yeah. And that's fine. Again, we're not forcing you. We're not saying you can't purchase it which I don't think any dealership would do, but just stuff like that I think is definitely a green flag and something, again, like what Gabby said is, 
you want to check the personality and the tone of the person that you are working with mm -hmm. and if they are pushing you you don't want to feel pressured or anything along those lines it's really just comes down to a conversation about in my perspective a conversation of what can I do to hopefully make things easier for you in the future yeah so it's a really now, good way of putting it let's do a little bit of a quick fire summary mm -hmm. uh, Gabby the tone if okay if the salesperson is pushy is that a red flag or a green flag red flag red flag if they do not give you the VIN, the Carfax, or anything like Red that. Red flag. Okay, that was a quick one. That was a little <laughs> bit of a quick one. <laughs> um, if they are Red helpful. Oh. <laughs> oh, I mean green. I'm colorblind. <laughs> if they're helpful. <laughs> it's my favorite color. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so if they are helpful, if they're listening to you, that's a green flag. Yeah, absolutely. If they go over the Carfax with you in the disclosures, what's that? That's a green flag. Definitely, if they answer your questions about the disclosures. Green flag. Mm. Mm -hmm. If your business manager isn't pushy. That's also a green flag. If your business manager is pushy. Eh, that's red. If I uh, throw you up against the door and force you to purchase an extended warranty. Oh, Charlotte, <laughs> red flag. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully from this uh, video, you guys were able to discern what we perceive as green flags and red flags in the auto industry, especially mm -hmm. in dealerships, and hopefully it helps you uh, make the best decision if you are purchasing a newer used car. Yep. If you do live in Ontario and you want a Kia or Hyundai, come purchase it from us. We'd yeah. love to help you guys out. We have brand for Kia, brand for Hyundai, no one's have Hyundai. We also have used cars if that's your thing, but if mm -hmm. you don't live in Ontario, hopefully this helps you shop around to find the dealer that works best for you. All right, thanks for listening, you guys. Hope to see you on our next podcast episode. Bye. Bye.